Next, we're going to veneer our quarter inch panels for the side panels that go on either side of the cabinet. So right now, these panels are cut oversized according to the, what we've got on the cut list. And the reason they're oversized is because we want to veneer it oversized so that we can cut off the rough edges when we're done and square up the panel again and make sure that we've got a square panel that's the proper size. And we also have to do this operation before we make the side panels because we need to know exactly how thick these panels are going to be and we don't know until we get veneer on them. So we're making two panels, one for each side, and we're going to do a simple book match. And a book match is simply um, two pieces of veneer opened up like a book so that you get the same pattern on both sides. When veneer is cut from the tree, it's cut into sheets that are anywhere from a 32nd to a 40th of an inch thick. And they're kept in the same order as they came in the tree. So any pattern that's in any given piece is going to continue to occur in the next piece. It's going to look almost the same as the previous piece and so on through the line. As you get down further in the, the stack, now the, the pattern might change a little bit more. But any given any two uh, leaves that are consecutive are going to have something that looks pretty similar. Now the, the veneer here actually is a fairly uniform pattern so it doesn't change that much as it goes through. There's other veneers where the pattern may change quite a bit as it goes through the stack of veneers and you'll see uh, a variety of changes. For example, this little eye here has become a bit smaller here. Yet the overall pattern is still pretty much the same. So when you do a book match with it, you're still getting the effect of it being essentially the same thing mirrored on both sides. So that's what we're going to do. You can also do a four-way book match, which is something like this with a burl, where you're mirroring this piece to this piece, this piece to this piece, and so on. So you can again see that the pattern's not exactly the same on all of them, but it's pretty close to give the effect of um, mirrored four times across. But we're only going to do a simple two-way wood match this time. And since this is a pretty straight-grained wood, if we just simply open it up like this, it isn't quite as interesting. So what we're going to do is, is angle it just a little bit so it kind of makes a V shape for our pattern. And we'll probably, we can decide later if we want the V to go up or go down. So the first step is to choose your veneers. And when you get when you get your veneers from your supplier, you wanna you're gonna assume that they're in consecutive order and you want to put numbers on them. And so we've already numbered this, like this is sheet number nine, number ten, eleven, twelve, and so on. So I need for what we're gonna do on the fronts of all these is we need four sheets of veneer. I need two to make the first pattern, and then two to, two to make the second pattern. And on the back, since we're not going to see the back of these panels, we can put pretty much anything on there, as long as we put um, the same thing on both panels. And it, uh, the reason we have to veneer both sides of a panel is because it, it, it keeps it balanced. If you only veneered one side, you would actually see, for example, on this panel, if you veneered just one side of it, you would actually cause the panel to bend. And that's due to the glue drying and pulling on one side of the um, panel. So we put something on the other side just to balance it out. You can use a cheaper veneer, um, just as long as it's something with similar characteristics. In our case, um, I'm just going to put a single sheet of this on the back because this is about 12 inches wide, these are about 12 inches wide, and I can just fit one sheet on there. So I'm going to take two sheets to use for the backs of each of these. So we can put the rest of it away. So we're going to put our back of veneer over here. So the first step is, and I can show this on something with a little more pattern in it,
It might be easier to see with something like this. If I were to, I'm going to decide where I want my pattern to open up. I could, I could make a cut here and have the pattern mirror across, mirror across that area. I could make my cut further out and mirror this, the sap in here, or I could cut it right here and have it open up and make the pattern there. I can see what it's what the book match is going to look like if I use a mirror. So if I cut along this line, I would get a pattern more looking like this. If I cut it way over here, I would get a pattern looking like that. So it's uh, the first thing I have to decide in, in any given situation is where I want to make my cut. The mirror can help me do that. In our case, it's a pretty uniform pattern, so I'm not too worried about it. But I can determine how much of, a, of an angle I want by using the mirror. And we'll do that in a minute. But the thing that I want to show you is before we do any cutting, we need to stack these veneers up and line up the grain. You can imagine if I if this was shifted and I taped these together because I'm going to cut through both of them at the same time, so I'm cutting through exactly the same point. If these weren't lined up, I would end up cutting one maybe here and the other one over here, and I really wouldn't have a, a true mirrored piece. So what I have to do is I actually have to line these up and tape them together before I make my cut. And since I want the exact same pattern on both of my panels, what I'm going to do is actually stack up my four pieces and cut all four of them at once. Again, we, we don't have quite the same issue here, but we do. You see all these stripes. If I didn't line them up properly and then I made my cut, I'm not going to get up uh, as good of a book match as I can. So I want to take as much care as I can to line these up before I make my cuts. So what I'm going to do is just put them like this and I'm just going to go through. And it's pretty easy to see with these dark and light bands. It's pretty easy to see where things are lining up. It's also important that, that it's lined up this way but it's pretty tough to tell on a straight grain wood like this um, where it is um, this way. If on a, on a burl like this, it's pretty easy because I've got things going this direction and this direction that I can match up against. The good news is, though, is later once we make the cut, we do have the ability to slide these back and forth and match it up in this direction. So it's more, more important that I get everything lined up here now. And once they're lined up, I'm just going to take some blue tape and tape these ends. I'm going to try to do it without uh, shifting anything around, and I'm going to tape it as tightly as I can. I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on this side. Now it's a little bit more interesting because I can't shift can't shift things that way, so I gotta lift them up and make sure things are matched. Notice when things are properly matched, it doesn't mean that the edges are going to line up where they were cut from the factory. Because trees, trees aren't straight on the edge, so they won't necessarily line up. So make sure you actually look and make sure that they're lined up the way you want them to be. Just double check. 